mothers for their sacrifice and their surrender. Because it takes sacrifice and surrender to give birth to a child. And it takes surrender and sacrifice to give rise to an adult. It also takes surrender and sacrifice to found a congregation and to disciple people for the glory of God. Today, we celebrate both. You're going to hear later in a scripture from Luke chapter 8. When Jesus' mother and brothers are waiting outside, and they say to Jesus, your mother and your brothers are outside. And his response is, my brothers, my mother, my family is all of those who believe in me. So look at the person beside you. That's your spiritual brother and your spiritual sister. Now, Jesus wasn't diminishing the biological family at all. Not at all. What he was doing was elevating the spiritual family to a higher place. Because the spiritual family, unlike the biological family, is eternal. The spiritual family is eternal. We are for eternity bound together as family. Yes, sir. Now, brothers and sisters, I ask you to listen to my sister Leslie and my sister Suzanne as they bring a message this morning of commemoration for mothers and the founders. May God bless the words from their lives. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you that you made this day, God. And we thank you, God, that we get to enjoy this day here on this earth with our brothers and sisters, our family of God here at Church of the Holy Spirit Song. Lord, I pray for the words of our mouths to give praise only to you, Lord God, to lift your name on high. Father, that we come together to worship you and honor you and to love you, God. Lord, thank you for this whole day. We thank you right now, God, for everything this day. And we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, I'm going to tell you a little story. One day, the worship committee of the First United Church of somewhere in some state in the United States was meeting. And they were discussing what they were going to do to recognize Mother's Day. Now, we know that some people call Mother's Day a hallmark celebration. But we know that a long time ago, Mother's Day was commemorated and actually began as part of it in the church as a way to honor mothers. So this committee, had deci they decided to give a rose to the oldest mother in the congregation. Now, I'm not going to ask the oldest mother in the congregation to raise her today, so don't worry. Okay. Yeah. They also decided that they would have all the mothers stand to recognize them during the service. They also decided that they were going to give uh, uh, more carnations to everyone who had the most grandchildren. And then somebody on the committee got really worried and they said, and they finally voiced their opinion and they said, well, we're honoring all these people that have kids, but what about Mrs. Smith? She's been teaching our kids in Sunday school for 30 years. And she has no kids herself, no children that she's given birth to. But isn't she too mother? Isn't, didn't she too mother all of the kids in this particular church? 
teaching first grade Sunday school class for all those years? Well, she's like a mother, they realize on the committee, to all of us. Some of us went through those classes. Shouldn't we ought to be able to recognize her on Mother's Day? Shouldn't we? Well, the worship committee of First Church somewhere in some denomination in some state had run right into the truths of the Christian faith. And that's this. In the church, all women are mothers. As all men are fathers. It doesn't matter whether you have any children or not. Mrs. Smith of First Church never bore a child, yet she mothered every single one of those kids that came into her class. Everyone. And in the world's eyes, she wasn't a mother to even one child. But in God's eyes, she was a mother to hundreds, Amen. to hundreds Amen. of people. You're right, Leslie. In God's eyes, she was a mother. And to understand this truth, you have to understand the church. The church is the family. We're the family of God. We have been adopted as children of God. God is our father. Christ is our brother. And everyone else in the world who has been saved, they're our cousins. They're our kin. We read in Luke 8, 19 to 21, where Tom spoke when Jesus was told that his mothers and brothers, they're looking for you outside. And Jesus said, who are my mother and my brothers? Those who do the will of my father, they are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, we're joined by the power of the Spirit to a new family. In God's eyes, we, not, we cease to be John Smith and Jane Doe and <coughs> Suzanne Tazek. We cease and we become Valentine Christian. That's right. We become Helen Christian, right. Patty Christian, right. Sherry Christian, Dottie Christian. <laughs> Praise God. We are the family of God. He chose you to be part of this family, this body of Christ. All of you who are here today, it, it wasn't just by chance. God placed you here. You're part of the body of Christ and the family of God. In Ephesians 1, 3 to 6, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, of God's will, to the praise and glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Scriptural. In this family, the older and more experienced members, we have a responsibility to care for the younger and inexperienced members. In that sense, we are all parents to those who are growing in the faith. Not just those who are growing physically, like little Scotty Boo and Haley. Not, like, not just those, but those who are growing spiritually. In Christ, we are all foster fathers and mothers for God's children. So today we honor all women in the church because in God's eyes, you are mothers all. Oh, that sounds so sweet. <laughs> the preacher says all the women in the church are mothers. Yeah, everybody clap for all the mothers. really get it. I'm not a mother. We don't understand. It's not all that easy. Amen. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you've gotten yourself into, you mothers. You don't know. I don't know about being a mother, but I'm the fourth child in a family of five kids. And I know that our parents worked very hard at raising us. They took time to teach us. They took time to nurture us. They took time to help us with our homework. I couldn't stand it when my dad used to, I'd take my book out to him, and I'd say, Dad, I need help with this page of homework. OK, well, let's go back a few pages and see where we are. No, don't go back. I don't want to go back. We're right here. And you see, we're right here. 
But he had to see where the study was coming from to be able to help me. It's, instead of just looking at it and pretending like he knew what he was doing, he took the time to do that. They taught us to push our chairs in when we left the meal table. They taught us how to drive. They taught us how to take care of others. They taught us how to care. I've also been the godmother of one beautiful little boy for three years. And I know being in his life a lot, it's not easy helping to raise a child. It's difficult. It's hard, hard work. It's not all cuteness and smiles, but it's also an awesome responsibility. I hear Mary being a parent is not easy, and I see that. People tell me that early years are the easiest part. <laughs> you hear that, all you parents out there? The early years are the easiest part. That's when Jill are laughing. More and more, though, we have to be aware of the dangerous effect of the world on our kids. The dangerous effect. The world wants to lure children and young people into the ways of the world. Let me teach you this way. Let me show you these things. Ways of life that offer no real fulfillment at all. Into materialism, into drugs, into addiction, into hatred, into climbing the corporate ladder, into sin. It's easy to immunize them against the diseases of the body. We go and we get our shots, but it's much more difficult for the diseases of the soul. This is the task that all of you women, in mother's eyes, in God's eyes, all you women, as mothers in God's eyes, have signed yourselves up for. This is what you sign yourself up for. Because when a child is dedicated, the church makes a promise before God when we dedicate a child here in this church. The church makes a promise before God to live according to the example of Jesus Christ, to raise that child up in the way that he or she should go, scriptural, to live according to what scripture tells us to do, to teach them about love and forgiveness, God's love and God's forgiveness. That means taking responsibility to protect them from the world, from the things outside those doors that are going to come against our kids and our young people. Now, any parent could tell you right now that you can't live your child's life for you. Amen? Amen. Our parents tried with us. They tried to live our lives, but there was a time where the break needed to happen, and it was the right time for the break, and it needed to happen, and there was a time where we needed to begin to learn to protect ourselves, whether we were raised in the church or not. The apron strings need to be cut. And when that happens, parents can't protect children from the world anymore. They can certainly pray for them. They can advise them as much as the children are willing to listen. If you were anything like me, it took me a while to listen after I hit 15 or 16. But in the meantime, we need to prepare our children in the faith to face the world. To face the world scripturally. Right. To face the world spiritually. Because there are spiritual forces that come against our kids and against right. us. And we need to help them appropriate and learn how to use the armor of God. Right. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We need to train them in spiritual warfare. That's right. Yes, Leslie, you're right. We are to put on that full armor of God every single day. 
in the light of this awesome responsibility that Christian mothers have, I feel our passage from Ephesians 1 is appropriate for today. Paul wrote to the Ephesians and he said, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. In this passage, Paul gives thanks for the faith and love of the Ephesians. Obviously, they were people who had great faith in Jesus, just as we do. And obviously, they were people who lived out that faith in love for each other, just as we do. They were a church of Christian mothers and fathers who cared well for God's children, just as we do. But Paul knew that the Ephesians faced trouble, just as we face. So he begins to pray for them, and he prays that they receive a spirit of wisdom and revelation. He also prays that the eyes of their hearts be enlightened so that they may know of the hope that they have in Christ Jesus, just as we know. It's important to note that he wants them to see. He wants them to see what their hope is and what their power is. Paul knew that the forces opposed them were so great that they could crush them. They could be crushed by their foes. But Paul also knew that Jesus had ascended into heaven and that all things, all powers, were subject under him. Even the powers which opposed Ephesus. Even the powers that oppose us today. That was their hope. This is our hope. The power of the glorified Christ. The power of Almighty God. Just as it was 2,000 years ago. It's the same today. So like Paul, I give thanks for the faith and love of the mothers in this church. I remember my own mother. My own mother set an example. And you know, the same way she prayed when I was little, she would cross her heart and pray and say, I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. She still does that. I was so surprised to see. She still does it. I shouldn't be surprised. But, you know, when you're not around your mother for so many years, and then you, you spend the night and you see that she still prays the whole thing, everything, hours she'll pray. And she lights candles, and she came from a Catholic background, but she did. And she prayed for people all the time, and she still does that today. She is one of the reasons that I'm a disciple of Christ today. But there are many others. Several in our own church come to mind. Simone and Deb, are they in here? No, they're with the children. <laughs> My example. Exactly. They are always with the children. They have two beautiful children, and you need to tell them that they were remembered today. They have given selflessly. If someone doesn't show up to take care of the children, they miss the sermon. They're in there so many times, time after time after time. Because they believe in our children, and they help set up the, the children's ministry, and they're there all the time. So you want to thank them today. Thank them for taking the time and missing this service today. Kelly Sands Vincent, she teaches our kids how to praise God through dance. Remember Christmas? I was so shocked to see two-year-olds doing this with the little flags. I was like, how did they possibly teach those kids to do And they did. And Kelly, thank you. It was wonderful. It was a blessing for each of us to see. Thank you. And another person comes to mind. Like Miss Smith, Patty Potter has not had children of her own by birth. But do you know that she's been teaching for nearly or almost more than 22 years? And she's taught hundreds of children. And I bet you didn't even know that she raised her own younger sisters. You know, Patty Potter, when I took a class with you, it was a couple years ago, I had so much fun. I felt like I was a kid. I was so excited she taught us. You know, my life would have been different much better than it even is now if Patty Potter had been my teacher years ago. Thank you, Patty Potter. You are a And how fitting is it today that we celebrate Founders Celebration Day. 
It's the day that we as a church and the leadership of Church of the Holy Spirit song prayed about and we've chosen to make special for our earthly founders. Our earthly founders, Pastor D and Jill. Now, I want to make something clear here because I feel it's important to note, and I know that Pastor Jill and the leadership feel exactly the same. The founder of this church is God Almighty. Amen. 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 And the head is Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Nobody else. He's <laughs> with us right now. Scripture tells us that as the body of Christ is gathered, there he is with us. Amen. We take no respect away from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Amen. from our Father God, and from the Holy Spirit by celebrating our earthly founders here today. They simply follow the call into ministry. They sacrifice a lot. And they're about to sacrifice much, much more to continue to answer his call in their lives and to follow him. They did the same to begin this church here in South Florida almost eight years ago. Pastor D and Jill, your spiritual children, thank you. Your obedience, your sacrifice, your love, your teaching, for giving your lives to God and exemplifying Christ for us. We love you and we thank you with all our hearts. But we also give thanks today for Christian mothers and mothers around the world. And we know that some people did not have a good example of a mother. And I pray that one of us here in church can be a good example for you. I pray that we can help heal that hurt. I pray that we can be there for you. And I also want you to know that if you need to talk about that, I pray that you call us and that you come to us about that and let us help you with that. Moms, you need insight to know what is good and what is true. You need the patience to persevere, to carry on when you don't feel like taking another step or doing anything else but falling down on the couch or in the bed. You need the grace to be forgiving. You need the faith to know that a point does come when you can't do anything else but pray. But you've got to pray. You've got to pray. And that it's all in God's hands. And I also pray, moms, for you to have the insight and power, which is our hope. There is a power that can overcome all that threatens our children. All of our children, both biological and spiritual. The source of this power is the glorified Christ. Don't try to do it without it. Don't ever try to do it without it. only succeed if our source of power is the one who ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. Glory be to God. Glory be to His Son, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, God. Thank you for everything that you have done for us, God. Thank you for filling us with your power, God. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for everything that you give us to do, God. May we glorify you and honor you by walking worthy of the calling on our lives, every single one of us, Lord, as we continue to walk together here as a body of Christ, as a family, the Church of the Holy Spirit. So, God, we turn our eyes to you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray.